Hey, good morning and welcome to January, a snowy January here in Hinterland. This, uh, this episode is going to cover, uh, I believe we're going to cover January and February. Uh, these are the two months where I think primarily you get up, it's dark as you can see, look at 623 in the morning and it's pitch black. Uh, you run around in circles, maintain your animals, uh, you know, cut some trees down and in our case here we've got a greenhouse and a, well a couple greenhouses I guess and an open air garden um, and, uh, and, and you sort of get through the winter. Uh, no planting can be done, no harvesting, nothing like that. We're not mowing any lawns. Uh, so the main thing is you just go around and uh, and maintain. So we're going to do that. Um, right away, we're going to uh, pull some of the uh, some of the output, I guess, from our from our uh, our greenhouses here. I mean, so I got up at six thirty, and my plan here is just to run run a couple errands quickly, uh, then maybe take a nap until later in the day. <laughs> Uh, you know we worked hard all year. We deserve a we deserve a nap here and here and there, uh, and we're going to definitely uh, take advantage of that here. So uh, I've got some wheat. Uh, so the, the oats, obviously, we're going to be taking those down into town to add to uh, to make oat flour, uh, which we can then turn into bread. The wheat and the canola, wheat and sorghum, sorry, that uh, that are growing out of our greenhouse, uh, that is going straight into the birds. This I think is our first. Uh, pallet of cotton uh correct me if i'm wrong but i don't remember taking a pallet of cotton off of there yet so we're gonna put that right in the spinnery and get uh the cotton fabric uh, activated because i f seem to remember i don't i think we gotta get some more wool in there too i don't think i have any wool in there one thing we're gonna be doing a lot of in this one <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be feeding bales into these animals i don't know why i i uh I, I seem to be, well, sorry, I, I, I should say, clarify. I was going to say, I don't know why I, take, I don't take more than one bale into these uh, these sheep, but uh, when you do put two bales on the front of this tractor, it becomes very difficult to drive. And if it was real life, we'd be destroying the French suspension in this thing. So it, realistically, we would probably only come in with the one bale. Uh, it is possible to take two bales in uh, to then obviously cut your overall, uh, you know, delivery time in half, but... Uh, I don't think it's good for the tractor. It does feel good getting wool out of these guys, though. And we're only, uh, I want to say, what are we, 30 sheep or 40 sheep or something like that? So imagine when we get full there, it's going to be, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot, of, uh, a lot of wool. Anyways, uh, I think we're going to take a nap. It's uh, now 6.50. And the sky, look at the sky. All right, let's see a bit of a magic trick as the sky morphs here. Bam. It's, uh, what is that, 12.30, a little afternoon. I'm not feeling very motivated to do anything today, to be honest with you. Back to bed. All right, January 2nd, 7 o'clock in the morning. Dark and snowy. The sky looks epic. We've got stuff to do. Might look a little bit like some of the stuff we already did. Anybody remember what we put down here? This may be the first visit to this, uh, this lowly little uh, beehive. I think we got to put in something more substantial because we have 10 liters of honey sitting here and uh, it's not really pumping out a lot of... Uh, all, that might be something for us in the summertime. Maybe we'll, we'll uh, beef up our bee... Uh, business I guess and see what we can't do to generate a little bit more uh, a little bit more honey 707 in the morning I I've had some comments uh, I w remember one comment I had uh, somebody asking to uh, keep the pace of these down to the way they started uh, I think inevitably it's going to be difficult to do that as more and more stuff happens uh, you know we'll be running around a little bit more uh, and, and definitely uh, in this episode in particular, I mean, we're covering two months and, we're, and we're, we're really just doing a ton of little tasks. I mean, there's some construction coming up. There's some stuff getting added. Uh, you'll see there's a number of things that are happening here. But I mean, we're in maintenance months, right? So we put the sorghum into the birds here. Now we're going to put the wheat into the birds. We're going to do this a lot over this episode, just basically going around in circles. I, I was... Uh, debating on whether or not I should be removing the snow 
but uh, I don't know. It seems like every time I invest in snow removal, uh, time and money, it, uh, it melts immediately. So I opted not to, at least in this winter. We'll see how the winter goes. I don't really know why I put that there, to be honest with you, <laughs> or nor do I understand why I put this up on the top shelf. I think it was just because I could. It seemed like the right thing to do. It does seem a lot more appropriate storing eggs out in the cold right now, maybe not this cold, but uh, than it did keeping it in the warm, keeping them in the warm shed or just on a shelf in the middle of the summertime. For realism, at some point we may want to uh, invest in some cold storage. And, and look at the chickens, nothing. Ducks, full pallet and a bit. These chickens are kind of a disappointment. Uh, here's another revolving task. Clear the loading area. Clear the loading area. We just have to keep clearing that uh, so we can keep spawning in pallets. In the future, it would be nice maybe to just have a dedicated trailer off to the side and instead of just moving these things off to the side, I could be just loading them onto the trailer. Because it, it likely once a year is my guess, maybe a couple times a year in whatever window of opportunity there is. Uh, when we hit the best pricing for the for these uh, products, we'll, we'll go and sell them. So, I mean, I, essentially moving them as little as possible would be nice. So instead of just building the mountain, I could uh, put it on a trailer. Still almost a little 50,000 uh, liters of wood still in there. So we're, uh, we're pretty good. It, uh, the production seems to spit out a fair amount of wood compared to uh, wood products compared to what you put in there. You want to take a guess of what we're going to do next? couple of nervous bales that are dancing around next to me. Yeah, we're going to put some more uh, feed into the sheep. It never ends. But also, it's also satisfying, you know, you got these animals relying on you and in the end they're uh, giving you wool to be able to turn into products. So, uh, I mean, it's a fair trade, I guess. Just keep feeding them. I still wonder if we're going to run out of, uh, of grass before we get to the spring, but we'll see just how much they eat. Yeah, so we had 42 animals right now. It's at this point that I started thinking maybe we want to beef this up a little bit. I think we had about 20, 20 back in here. I don't want to go crazy spending tons of money, and they will breed, um, but I, uh, I do want to see that. I guess it's hard, right, because the spinnery is so slow, so even if we completely like ramped up our wool production if we put it all into the spinnery it's only going to go so fast like that's a base game spinnery i believe and actually i don't really have an option for anything else uh if uh, i don't i've not really seen any other options to be honest with you but uh it's so slow so even if we generated a ton of cotton and a ton of wool i don't know that it's gonna really result in way more fabric. It's just going to still be super slow. Yeah, let's get this shut. It's coming down too. Where I am uh, here in Ontario, Canada, uh, we got dumped on yesterday. Look at the yard. Anyways, January, 8 o'clock in the morning. It's time to go grab the uh, logging trailer and get to work here. So, I think I mentioned you maintain, you feed the animals, and you cut trees down. So we're, uh, I could spend the entire winter clear cutting the entire forest and walking away with a couple hundred grand as we get into the spring. Probably would be a smart thing to do, to be honest with you, because we do need things like a harvester. Uh, we're going to want to buy more seed in that. I think like March is a good, good month for planting. Uh, so we'll want to make some fields and that kind of stuff. So I can only imagine like if we went and spent the winter time just just clear cutting this forest, we would be, uh, you know, we'd be sitting in a great spot when we got to the spring. But I think uh, for now, we're just going to, uh, I don't know, take some trees off. And uh, and and so so it's kind of gives us something to do here during the winter. But uh, by no means are we doing it to to, to create a massive bankroll.
much as I uh, might have complained about these forks early on not being adjustable or whatever, they uh, they do pretty well for for uh, logging. Um, they seem to manage to you know scoop onto that pretty good and, and get them get them loaded up. They're they're easy to control. Got some good sized logs on here too. I think we could benefit though from uh, from an additional trailer, and I know we can. What do you call that? Daisy train? Is that what you call it when you put the trailers in front of each other? I know we can we can t tow multiple trailers, uh, so I think that might be something we want to look at here. Anybody want to take a guess? How much are we gonna get? Not bad. The environmental bonus definitely helps. So a little 15, 16 grand there. And look at that. This is a great bang for the buck, this trailer. Especially on the size of farming. I mean, I don't need a transport truck, obviously. Uh, so for four grand or whatever, uh, a little, little, little under four grand, uh, it is a great trailer. Now there's just this whole pain in the backside of trying to connect them. I just can't figure it out. It's like, I go left with the tractor, the trailer goes the other way. I, I like, it's just so counterintuitive. I just can't get it. I may spend a whole day trying to learn that one day and become an expert, but I don't know that there's many experts when it comes to backing up those kinds of trailers. All right, we're heading back in for a double load here. I don't know that we're gonna run this one through a time lapse also. I think we'll probably just <laughs> get, uh, get it loaded. Look, it's like circus loading here. <laughs> Anyways, I think we'll, just, we'll probably get it loaded and then uh, and then see how much uh, how much we get for it. I got I kind of got to flex a little bit though. Like it does it does do well. I mean, you got to throw weight on the back of this door with these uh, with these arms and these uh, forks, and and you can carry uh, carry logs in triplicate, which is which is kind of cool. It'd be cool to have really long like extended forks. Even that, that must be a thing, so you could carry way more. Uh, but then obviously you got to deal with the extra weight and make sure you're using the right piece of equipment. I've never used a loader or anything. I've only ever used tractors and uh, and the arms, but uh, I don't know. Might be something to try at some point. Like forestry equipment, all that Ponzi stuff. And it all looks so cool, but I've never actually uh, really used it. P probably part of the challenge too is I use keyboard and mouse for everything. So... Uh, the controls can be a little t challenging from what I gather. So this is like the diciest part of this drive and all I kept picturing as I was going down this hill was rolling and having to reload everything. Like look at those tra <laughs> the trailers just bouncing down there. Anyways, we got the long run into the store now. The farm does look pretty cool in the background there with the snow. As I just guess where the road is. All right, what's it gonna be? Obviously it's gonna be more than the first time because we have two trailers, but how much more? I mean, it should more than pay for what we spent on the trailer. There you go. Little 25, 25.5. All right, let's get these things dumped. We'll throw this on the trailer and uh, probably next time we go to town, we'll sell it. And again, it does feel a little better storing the stuff outside in the winter than it did in the, in the shed in the summertime, that's for sure. I know I said it before too, those, those little silos, there are little uh, greenhouses up there, such a disappointment. They don't, they don't really produce anything quickly, do they? And it's me again, sheep. Let's just keep dumping bales into here. I should kind of track the pace because, I mean, even if like, what do we put four or five bales a day in here? These are small bales, um, but at that rate, uh, we may get, uh, we may get it. Cause I think we can mow the lawn again in uh, like March, right? So as long as we can get through, uh, <coughs> I've got, I've, pro I've probably have 15, 20 bales in the shed. 
So as long as we can get through, uh, you know, we're already in the second day of January here. So as long as we can get through this this day and uh, and then the two days in February, we might be all right. Keep feeding the spinnery. Yeah, you see the yard there. I, I just can't help but think that maybe I should be. Uh, Maybe I should be, I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of plowing, but uh, the snowblower is actually kind of fun. Maybe in, maybe, maybe if, it, if the winter goes long and, and we see a lot of snow here, then uh, maybe, uh, maybe that would be a good investment for future winters. Then it gives us one more thing to do during the winter instead of just rotating, uh, you know, clearing the, clearing the spawn box here, you know, feeding the animals, that kind of stuff. We could we could add in snow blowing. Quick check on the birds. 11.30 here on the second day of January. I don't know, but a good nap to put us to 2.30 in the afternoon melted all the snow. What was I just saying about snow removal in this game? Uh, had I bought a snowblower, I'd be pretty disappointed right now. <laughs> Look, it's like beautiful outside. Crazy. Now the forecast, if you look up there, is calling for some, some snow. I don't know if it's substantial snow, but it's five degrees Celsius right now. High of six, lowest at minus seven. Pretty mild. Not a bad day. Not a bad day to be sitting on almost a hundred grand. Animals are happy. Got lots of opportunity ahead of us. So there's a couple pallets of oats. We can bring those and put them into the uh, into the bakery, so we can start making oat flour. That'll be a good uh, a good idea here. I do want to get these tomatoes sold first, though. Uh, we don't have a lot of options as to where we're going to sell them, so we'll do a quick check of the pricing. Grab the old forklift. Yeah, I mean, with three options. What was the funny one? I think, uh... There was a weird... Wasn't there a weird item that we sell to the restaurant? Or was that another playthrough? Sometimes the sell points don't make sense. <laughs> Not bad, almost 600 bucks there. We'll get the we'll get the oats. I'm, I'm kind of living dangerously here too. I didn't strap these things down. I can see it right now, and I, I uh, you can see one of the pallets sort of floating around there. But we want to keep this going. Uh, I don't recall ever getting a pallet of anything out of the baker yet. So, but we are just ramping up uh, with our inputs. So I think over time we'll see we'll see that change. All right, it's construction time. This open area here. Uh, has been begging for something and now that we have a couple bucks to spend uh, the idea is that we're going to uh, well cr create a little more havoc for ourselves and, and uh, throw in uh, some more uh, well, for, uh, sorry first for, I should say first we're gonna place this water distributor because now we're gonna be putting in more greenhouses and I don't want to have to be chasing water all the time so this actually um, later proves to be a bit of a challenge what I just did there uh, that you'll uh, you'll see coming up here, but first we want to get the greenhouses in. As I obsess over uh, keeping things straight, <laughs> line it up with that, line it up with that. Anyway, so I'm just looking for the flattest uh, areas here right now, based on the if it's a ten thousand uh, dollar placeable, and and you can see the white cost of it is ten thousand thirty nine dollars was the last one. It means that it's uh, it's nice and flat there, so it's not having to do a lot of landscaping. Just a curious to what else might fit in here, but I'm not going to place anything else there now. Uh, so we get the ground painted up so it does look realistic. I, I am not a person that likes to place something and then and then work the ground later. I always like to make it look uh, realistic as quickly as I possibly can. I seldom will I ever leave that. As you can see by the roads and everything else. So anyway, so now we have a couple more greenhouses. We've got to uh, we got to figure out a good way to water them. So this, I, I didn't even really know about these water distributors. Um, I saw somebody, you know what? I think it was I always, but this will be our, uh, our, our Dagoin reference uh, per episode, right? So it was a uh, Dagoin I think that I saw was using a water distributor and, uh, and it just makes so much sense. So this will be the first time that I actually attempt to use it. 
Um, it holds a lot of water, and this little trailer holds 2,000 liters. So it's not very well matched. Um, but the bonus of having it right next to the, I mean, basically I fill up, I can roll over to the, uh, to the distributor, I should be able to just unload and then just keep doing laps. But you'll see here, so look at the flash. I can't for the life of me catch the, the trigger. Um, and it's a, I, I sort of later discover that it's like a height thing. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not reaching. I think it's, I think I'm too low is what, what I sort of determined. Uh, I'm not hitting that, uh, that trigger. It's sporadic. It's basically, uh, well, it's extremely frustrating is what it is. So I, I do manage to get some water into the distributor, but, um, but is not doing his job for me. So it's uh, it's time in this uh, in this spot. Our, our uh, it's, it's, it's time is numbered. The time is numbered. Is that what you'd say? So yeah, I mean, I eventually just gave up on the distributor and figured I'd throw at least one tank, two thousand liters, into each of these silos to get them going, and uh, and we could go from there. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon on a on a January second day of January. Is it me? Is it starting to get a little dark there? up sheep I still really like the way this is shaping up here this is a great little, little trailer anyways when you're when you're working sort of small small uh, stuff, right? So, uh, welcome to February 1st. I slept well. Seven, almost 7.30 in the morning, and uh, it did not snow. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Mother Nature. <laughs> this is not the worst of waking up to like 10 feet of snow. So anyways, we can get some stuff done today, which is good. Now that we don't have to deal with the snow. But we got another early start here. I didn't want to get up at 6.30 uh, because it was just so dark the last time we tried to do that. These may be the first sunflowers that we spawn. I think. Some heavy pallets too. Look, see, these ones are only 100 kilograms. The other ones were 190. Fun fact, uh, I think you can set your regular strength to two different levels in Farming Simulator, 100 or, or uh, 200 kilograms. Is there something smaller? I'm not sure, but I think I've had this conversation with y'all at some point that uh, 200 kilograms does seem a little unrealistic, and that's what I started this series on, so I just decided to leave it. Uh, so, for example, if there's a tree or something that weighs under 200 kilograms, I can lift it up. Um, in the uh, context of the game, uh, what what at this point in the in the playthrough I had not yet discovered was that I could pick these things up. I hadn't even tried. I don't think, or I just assumed I couldn't, or I just decided maybe I just wanted to be super realistic and only use a loader or something. I don't know what my rationale was, but uh, at this point I am not uh, yet picking pallets up. All right, these sunflowers are going to go right into town because we're going to start making our sunflower oil. We, we can make sunflower oil and canola oil. And uh, from what I recall, and I, I can't uh, off the top of my head remember what the pricing for that is, but I seem to remember it being quite, uh, quite lucrative. We might be able to put a few kids through school with our oil production. One thing I like about this map also with these painted ground textures, see all the driving around I'm doing and it's leaving tracks? I really appreciate that on a map. Um, there's certain maps that are beautiful. Uh, I, I use Land of Italy as an example, but the road surfaces where they've made custom road surfaces don't leave any tracks, no dust, nothing. Uh, I don't really like that. 
I find it uh, when you get dust and the leaves tracks, it uh, looks so much better. I mean, what kid didn't, uh, you know, grab his matchbox cars and, and play in the sand and make tire tracks? That's, I think that was my entire childhood. <laughs> so, so to have that in the game is actually really cool. When you get dynamic dirt eventually where you can actually deform the ground, that will be pretty sweet. I mean, the mud system is okay, but, uh, but if you can actually see where you've gone, that, that'll be pretty cool. Although the bumps would just send these pallets and everything flying. Like, thankfully, it's pretty smooth here. So I ended up uh, kind of prematurely spawning some pallets from the other greenhouse, uh, only because I knew I was going to town anyways, so I figured I might as well just take what I can get right now, and then we'll go dump it all into the, into the production. What are we? We're about uh, 26 minutes into this and uh, and we're already in the uh, first half of February. This is how you clear through a couple months. But what do you think in general anyways? Like, what, what would you be doing differently uh, in your January and February on the map here? The only other thing I could think of is that we would go and um, we would go and, and jump into the forest and start clear cutting. Or, or we could plow. I mean, we could, we could, uh, we could have obviously created a field. It's, it's not snowing, so we, we could have done that for sure. I, I guess, you know, in in the real world, would you go and and do that with the frost in the ground? Um, because, like February here, the ground's rock hard. So is it harder in your equipment? I have no idea. Is it, does it use more fuel? Does it make more sense to wait until spring when things soften up? I don't know. The sky, everything's looking good. I did notice uh, some wee, uh, some wee people running around here, <laughs> like, like this little guy. So we're up to 108 animals now. Uh, we were 62, I think, is what we had. So seemingly we've birthed 40 animals, right? Because I think we were at 42. We bought 20, and I don't recall buying any more, unless I did and you saw it and I didn't notice. But I definitely noticed these little zero-month-old uh, lambs. You look tasty. Excuse me. Pardon me. All right, let's get this into the spinnery. I like the frosted grass. That was cool. I like that there is a, even when there's no snow, I like that there's a, you can see a difference, obviously, between the seasons. Probably got to find a place to store that fabric, too. that it's hard to make money and I am on hard economy here but uh, but when I look at like this ever-growing stack of wood products and I know there's a you know a decent dollar value per pallet it uh, I am looking forward to I, I, like I made a comment in, the, in one of the last episodes or whatever where it's like oh you know we start making too much money and then it gets boring but I am looking forward to making money don't get me wrong all right it's time it's time to address the distribu distributor. See, look, I can't just leave. I can't just leave that patch. I gotta throw down some grass, and then I can't just have grass. I gotta throw down a couple bushes. <laughs> it's my curse. So, a little uncharacteristic here, I... Uh, in searching for a home, which is not going to be there. Nope. And it won't be here. Nope. Not that angle either. Nope. And it definitely won't be over here. Uh, I'll put it here. So 
Look, it's at a thousand. Normally I'd go in and landscape that, but for some reason I just placed it. Uh, that is, maybe it was from frustration. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Um, and then I had to go back and deal with the, the landscaping after. Um, get that corner all tidied up. I think it's a good place for it anyways, but uh, but there were some little, some landscaping challenges, I guess. Um, Cause I did want to, Sort of, see, you see how I got some edges like it's elevated like that. I built it on a bit of a side hill, so it has a bump, which uh, which kind of bugs me. I mean, the trigger. So look right there. Look how easy access the trigger was, right? Now I'll go in and try to address some of the bumps, which I'm effectively lowering the ground, really all the way around. I don't want to hit the chicken coop there. So lowering the ground uh, created an issue for me, and and now I'm back to where I was before, uh, because now the trailer's the trailer's too low. It's not reaching the trigger easily. I mean, you can see I did hit it there, but it, then it loses it, right? Luckily, it dawned on me that I had lowered the ground, and perhaps that was the issue. Otherwise, I would have uh, deleted it, and we would have tried to find a different distributor. I think there's a there's a blue kind of barrel sort of looking one, which is cool too. But I did I did like this. I liked a little bit of height. I, I didn't I don't want things that are too tall on the map here, but I did like the fact that this kind of looks like a silo. So here now I'm, I'm going to raise it up again back to the level it was at before. Now I got this off to the left there. I got this uneven hill that I don't really like. But anyways, if that's the if that's our biggest problem, then I think we're doing okay. So now that the ground the trailer sits on is higher, uh, the trigger uh, begins to present itself. Now, I do eventually find a sweet spot of where I can just roll up and hit it every single time, but it did require putting the ground back to the height that, uh, that, that the assets set when I placed it. I guess there's a reason why uh, it did that. <laughs> so that out of the way, uh, and not generating enough food for the birds in a quick way, I had to come and buy a couple of big bags. <laughs> the funny thing is I can't, that the uh, forklift doesn't get high enough to be able to lift these bags onto the trailer. So I'll have to figure that out eventually if I'm gonna be buying those big bags. But, uh, so I had to put the, I had to find a place where the trailer could be parked uh, that would be low enough. So I found a bit of a side hill here, which did make me a little nervous because I did not want to dump anything into the lake. But, uh, but I think we got off okay. These are these are way bigger than actually I, I pictured, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's a little uh, precarious uh, parking there on the side of the hill, but it it worked out. And now we can. I think these are what two or four thousand liters a piece, so we can put. Uh, uh, it's wheat. No, they're two thousand a piece because it does show at the bottom there that we had four thousand. Look at that destroying the tractor <laughs> you're one tough little tractor anyway so we get we get a bag into each of the animal enclosures there I don't know why I'm giving it to the chickens these guys are somewhat useless I should be selling them and just getting all ducks I might have to consider that in the future and just go duck only they just they spit out eggs way faster actually I should watch though I don't know if they eat more food I didn't actually, that just occurred to me now. So maybe it's all relative. Maybe the uh, input is more, but the output is more. Starting to get some ideas here. There's a massive mow coming in our future. And I'm just trying to gauge, this is all map grass. This is not, uh, like I've, I've mowed it, but it's grown back naturally. I haven't done anything with it. Nine o'clock, first day of February. Might be time for a quick break. Maybe a bowl of Mr. Noodle. <laughs> All right, 322, we'd barbecued and said, we took a nap and barbecued and now we're back at it. It's nine degrees outside on February. This is a beautiful day. Nine degrees Celsius. I would take that all day long. Uh, don't worry, this is just a... Um, just in preparation. I'm just preparing, I'm not mowing. I don't know why, but I just have this itch to 
tow the batwing, <laughs> so I brought it down here. Maybe I figured it wasn't damaged enough, so I just leave it out in the snow. Maybe if it snows, at least it'll be down here. But anyways, that's just a bit of a uh, precursor to something that'll happen, and uh, I don't think it's going to happen this episode, but... Everything's looking green, which is nice. The frost is off. Obviously, it's 9 degrees. Everything would melt very quick. The, uh, this greenhouse definitely does not spawn the sorghum as fast as it does the wheat and the oats. And I bet you if I went in and looked, we'd probably find that that's, uh, that's reality. Um, because, yeah, I don't recall seeing as much sorghum. I, I seem to recall seeing more wheat or oats come out of that silo. All right. Let me show you what happens when I try to turn a corner with two bales. <laughs> oh. Yeah, like if that if it was real life, it, we we would just be crushing that thing. And if we did that all the time, it would just be horrible. Anybody want to go to the second day of February? Three forty-four. Already lost my steam. <laughs> Early start here. It is pitch black out. But. As with most days, we've got some maintaining to do. We have a, uh... Yeah, there we go. Keep stacking these things. Yeah, we got a couple couple big things we want to get done today uh, before we get uh, before we get into uh, into March. I'm really looking forward to uh, March. Uh, I mean, this is year one, right? So we planted this year. We haven't really done a harvest yet. Uh, so when we get into the spring, I guess we don't really harvest in the spring, do we? We harvest uh, kind of middle of the year or end of the year. Um, but uh, but we will be we will have an opportunity to get stuff planted. So we're gonna have to make some more fields and stuff. It's, it's kind of exciting. There we go. No pressure. go without incident we got it over here all right we got some for the other birds so these first two are the cereal crops and the last one there on the right hand side I have that set up for the oil crops like the sunflower and canola so we'll be pulling our wheats oats and and sorghum out of these these first two and uh, canola and uh, and sunflower out of the last one there. Just gotta try to navigate these corners without dropping anything. But it's the kind of game you don't mind taking your time a bit, right? And I think we've all experienced the more you rush the more things get screwed up in this game. <laughs> you know, if you didn't like reloading the trailer once, don't rush it, you'll be reloading it again. Healthy 360 birds in there, doing absolutely nothing for me. Thanks, chickens. So I think it's just about time to deal with this trailer. <laughs> um, because putting 2,000 liters at a time into this uh, into this distributor is not uh, not going to cut it. Looking for options. This thing's kind of cool, but now it's only 3,000 liters. It's a big purchase for us. 10,900 bucks, almost $11,000. 
over 11 once we start adding custom paint. But at 10,000 liters, effectively five times the volume of the current trailer that we have. Now we're over 12 grand. Big spender. So a little over 12 grand gets us 10,000 liters capacity. So we'll be able to fill that distributor up five times faster than this trailer. And as uh, luck would have it, we can break it, break it. We can bring it back. We can repair it for nothing and, uh, and we can sell it. And I'm gonna say that we get three grand for it. Is that what we got for it? I don't recall. I think it's about three grand that we got for it. So really, let's say we got three, so twelve. So we, we you know, we spent like nine thousand dollars on uh, on this big beautiful trailer here. What you kind of have to do, right? I mean, if you're going to get into like, so the the greenhouses are kind of a funny, funny dynamic here in the game. I mean, they're they're an opportunity to to grow crops. Like, for example, I would way rather this is me personally. I would way rather grow beets and potatoes in a greenhouse and just have a spawn pallets than have to go and harvest that stuff. It's our first sunflower oil. Got to check those prices. Look at that. Three thousand dollars per per uh, thousand liters. Is a pallet a thousand liters? It is. Yes. Whoa, 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 what I would do for a hundred pallets? That'd be fantastic. But yeah. Um, the new crops like carrots and that kind of stuff that came out with the expansion. I don't have, I have zero desire to go anything that's like two rows, one or two rows. Uh, I have no desire to, to do that. Um, vineyards, like, uh, it's just not me. I don't know. At some point, if we're just looking for things to do, then maybe we will, but oh, look at that sky. But, but I just, it's just not appealing to me at all. Um, so if I can grow all that stuff in a greenhouse where I just have to add water or in some cases water, manure, fertilizer, whatever. I'll do that all day long versus uh, having to actually, you know, farm it traditionally. The only thing with this trailer is, so you set it to fill and then go do something <laughs> because it doesn't fill up super fast, but it's also not horrible. The good news is this type, this time of year, uh, you know, there's an animal to feed or or whatever. There's always a little task that you can do uh, that uh, will fill the time while your trailer's filling because it's not super fast. It, it empties okay, but it fills up pretty slow. Slow, slowly. I just ran that pallet over, so I was trying to see if it was light enough for me to push back into the spawn point, but whatever, we can fix that another time. It's not gonna impede something else from spawning, which is good. Somehow I got this over here in one piece without dropping that top pallet. And it's at this moment that I finally decide to start storing the fabric. Well, I guess in all fairness, these are the first two pallets, so I had no pallets to store prior to this. And the only place that I can think of uh, to store this is over with the grass, um, the grass bales. So at least it's out of the it's out of the elements, right? Because we don't want rain and snow on this fresh, colorful fabric that we're going to be taking to uh, to sell. So I'll throw it in this uh, this barn <laughs> with you know maybe the mice can use it as a bed. Then I'll go sell it. <laughs> I think I said what a ten or fifteen bales in there, but I think I have quite a, quite a bit more than ten or fifteen bales. All right, it's finally full. We can go start dumping some water here. I mean, if some of it's just how much patience I have, it's like, okay, how many, how many times do I want to go around in a circle with this thing? Because it does take quite a bit to fill up. And I, I mean, well, I, I jump cut there, but it's, it does, it does take a while to empty. It's a good time to sort of sit there and check an email. 
So we'll spin a few laps and get, uh, you know, 20 or 30 uh, thousand liters into the distributor. And then, and then it'll do its thing because some of the silos are, or silos, some of the greenhouses are going to use water faster than others. Um, you know, throw 30,000 liters into this thing and it might last quite a while. Round and around we go. Yeah, see, look at the tire tracks there. That looks so cool. That's what every map needs. Anything they can do to add more, uh, more a layer of realism is uh, okay by me. Yeah, so we're 30,000 liters. Just making sure that it was going to the right places. Those things are a game changer. I can only imagine if you had like 15 greenhouses, uh, what a pain in the butt it would be to have to go and actually individually service them all. So in some of the silos that need uh, seeds or fertilizer and that kind of stuff, is there a distributor that you can set up for that stuff too? All right, we'll get that in there. So that'll be 40,000 liters, I think, of water. Was, I think we checked the last time it was 30. Now this, there's no great place to park this. Um, and it is effectively a pull through trailer uh, because I sure do not want to back this trailer up. Do I want to take a break? Three seventeen. I've been checking the store periodically. I just haven't put it on camera. Um, so, and there's been nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, check that out. March, April. If we can get some fields to set up by that point, uh, it'll be fantastic. We can plant. Uh, I do want to get a field of sunflowers planted. We have a planter too, because as you recall, we have that John Deere planter that we managed to pick up on sale. So it'd be nice to get a, a field of sunflowers, more so just because they look really cool. Yeah, lots of opportunity there. It's gonna be fun to harvest some crops too. You always gotta kinda of go through here and do a quick check. I know there's a mod that you can kind of see all this stuff in one place at once, but I find it a little confusing, so I just kind of keep coming back into the map. Of course, you got to hit the odd thing, right? So, uh, this is right around the time where I discover that you can actually hand bomb some of these pallets. Which, which I have no issues with. I mean, these, uh, the grain are 100 kilograms. I think the sunflowers are even, no, we saw that. They're 190, so they fit in. Uh, the cotton's 190, so I could pick that up if I wanted to. There's oats. 100 kilograms, no problem. So I don't have a problem with it if you don't have a problem with it. So we can make some oat flour, we can make some... Uh, I want to say that was sunflower, I don't think it was canola. That's some sunflower oil. So this one is, uh, oh, uh, I do have this issue where I trip a lot. I'm quite clumsy. This one's wheat. 
if you try to run at all, uh, immediately I trip and then everything goes flying. Thankfully, the, the pallet doesn't empty. If that box emptied everywhere and I had to come back with a shovel to clean it all up, that would suck. Yeah, we should have a pretty decent haul to take down to, uh, down to the production. So, I guess, uh, full disclosure, um, I ran into a, a, as you can see, like this, this episode here, obviously I've, uh, I'm essentially just doing a voiceover over top of all the gameplay, uh, minimal time lapses, a lot of gameplay, um, uh, because I had recorded everything without any audio. Um, I actually have, uh, a number of episodes already set up that will require voiceover and, uh, what do you think of the pace of this? Like, would you prefer to see, uh, I don't know, whatever. Tell me what you think of this episode. Uh, I'm curious because I have, I don't know, not many. I think I might have about, uh, 200 gigs of, of, of video <laughs> sitting in a folder. I, I binge played. I couldn't help it. And I couldn't record audio just because of a few issues. Um, so, but I just absolutely, I got into a spot where I love playing this map. So I have a lot of good things set up. There's tons of cool stuff that's going to happen. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Well, let me know what you think of this video here. So we're going to get this one down to, uh, we're going to get this sort of final, final, uh, little shipment here down to the production. And then, uh, and then we're going to call it quits for, uh, February here and the episode. Um, anyways, I, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I. I posted a, an episode of uh, a first episode of Bally Springs, and uh, I'm going to try to uh, try to run the two series side by side. Uh, Bally Springs is a is a map that I've just absolutely loved from when it first came out, and it's just more improved and better now. I, I, I like doing grass work in the, in this game, and that's kind of what what a lot of that is. Uh, so we're doing pigs and cows over there. Uh, so go check that out, anyways. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you uh, I don't know. There's lots of good stuff coming on this map here, and I can't wait to share it uh, with you. Um, if you're one of the roughly 80% or whatever, the people that watch this channel that aren't actually subscribed to it, uh, then please take the time to, sub uh, to subscribe. That'd be fantastic. I am uh, somehow managed to get a little over 500 people to subscribe, which is pretty cool. Uh, it would be cool to uh, it would be cool to get to a thousand uh, subscribers and uh, and 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 get a paycheck for a dollar from YouTube. That'd be kind of interesting. But anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to leave it here as we put this stuff into the uh, into the bakery. So thanks so much and uh, have a great day. See ya.